Germany's new head of state. What characteristics should the German president have? In the interview, the Conservatives' presidential candidate, Christian Wolff. Herr Wolf, what characteristics would you say a German president has to have in 2010? I think the German president has to be able to bring people together, to build bridges and promote dialogue, sometimes between differing ethnic backgrounds, religions and languages. The president needs a global outlook because many issues like climate change, world peace and the fight against terror can only be addressed at the international level, so the president has to represent represent Germany on the world stage. Germany is totally taken up with the World Cup right now. Some of the German players are first or second generation immigrants. Would you say Germany is a country of immigration? We have experienced a lot of immigration, and that's a good thing. We need these people in all areas, not just in sport, but in culture, industry and politics. But until now, we've not been a classic country of immigration like New Zealand, Australia or the U.S. They clearly defined the conditions under which people could come. Here it's been left more to chance. So we now need a more organized integration process. We need to focus on the many successful examples examples of integration. I was the first state premier here in Germany to appoint a Muslim woman as minister. We now have around three or four million Muslims here in Germany. They have a right to be represented in important positions of government. What do Muslims, for example, need to have to enter government? To what extent do they have to adapt to our country? Inwieweit müssen Sie sich auch einlassen auf unser Land? Sie bringen ja eine ganz They bring a high level of motivation and a knowledge of other cultures and languages. And of course, they have to accept our free democratic order. But it's not only about what we can expect from them. It's also what they can expect from us in terms of equal opportunities with other German nationals. You've been state premier of Lower Saxony for many years. It's a large, important former West German state that once bordered communist East Germany. It's been 20 years since reunification. Are we now one country? We are a reunified Germany looking to serve the cause of peace under the rule of law and personal freedom. But we need to develop greater interest in each other's biographies. There's too little recognition of what many in eastern Germany have achieved. They've had to go through a much greater process of change than we in the West. I think those East Germans who have moved forward with these deserve a lot more respect and recognition than we might develop more mutual affection. German unity has also led to a greater role for Germany internationally. Today German soldiers can be found in Africa, Kosovo and of course Afghanistan. In your view, what are these missions about? It's about reliable relations between countries and being a reliable partner in our international alliances, in NATO, the UN. It's important that there's an international mandate and that we are then ready to take on responsibilities within these alliances. It's not about pursuing a national foreign policy, but about being a reliable partner within the alliances. Beyond the military aspect, what role does Germany play in the world? Who are our partners? Firstly, we need to be a good partner in Europe. Europe is a huge success story. Then there's our relations with the U.S. It was the Americans who liberated Germany from the Nazis. We must never forget that. The Americans also helped to bring about German reunification under George Bush Sr. So we have reason enough to intensify our relations with America for our mutual benefit. Then I'd also like to help expand our relations with China, Japan and India, major important countries that have in the case of China and India a large gap between rich and poor. I'd also support closer relations with the Gulf states, such as the United Arab Emirates and Qatar. We also need to fulfill our responsibility to Israel, while not losing sight of the Palestinians' right to their own state.
nie aus dem Auge verlieren. Lass mich noch mal auf Europa kommen. Wir Returning to Europe, we have substantial economic and financial problems in Europe right now, resulting from the global economic crisis. Angela Merkel warned recently that Europe could break apart if we're not careful. Your party, the CDU, starting with Konrad Adenauer, has stood for European integration more than any other in Germany. How endangered is the European project? We're facing some big problems. The euro has to remain stable. We in Europe have got to get away from fighting the crisis by incurring ever more debt. Japan and America are facing the same problem. But it will be solved because we share the same fundamental conviction. This united Europe with its 500 million people works better and is more successful than the debates make it appear. I believe the differences we have will be overcome by the European Commission because the things we have in common are much greater. We're about the same age, so I hope you don't mind me asking. Can a 51-year-old man be a father of the nation? I have a 16-year-old daughter and a 2-year-old son. In that respect, I'm already a father. Father of a nation naturally conjures up visions of someone much older. But we all get older every day. I was flattered when, years ago, I was described as the father of Lower Saxony, because it conveys a sense of security and responsibility. I'd see it as a big compliment if, in years to come, people would talk about me to a certain extent as a father of the nation. If elected, you'd be the 10th president of the German Federal Republic. Which of your predecessors is most like a role model for you? I associate something positive with all nine presidents. But obviously, I'm more familiar with the last four or five. I would say Roman Herzog with his speeches, the famous speech about how a jolt needed to go through Germany, where he said we needed to make more of an effort, I found that very exemplary. And then Horst Kurler, with the impetus he gave in various areas. When he spoke of monsters in the financial world, his particular interest in Africa, the way he sought to bring politics closer to ordinary people. So Horst Köhler and Roman Herzog. Also Horst Köhler, Roman Herzog, das wären die beiden, die ich nennen würde, wenn sie mir abverlangen, mich auf zwei festzulegen. Es gibt drei Kandidaten für das Amt des Bundespräsidenten. Und, uh, wenn ich There are three candidates for president, and it seems to me at least one of the candidates has started something like an election campaign, seeking to mobilize support online. Do you think it's appropriate for the whole thing to turn into an election campaign? Or is that not the German tradition? The process in Germany is very fair. Having several candidates to choose from is democratic. And seeking to influence the electors in the Federal Assembly online via Twitter, Facebook and so on is democracy in action. The nice thing is that it's very fair and we only speak about one another in a positive way. There's no cause to say anything negative. I think we can be very satisfied. We will have a president supported by the vast majority, whom the people also don't need to fear. There's a chance that the president will win the hearts of the Germans very quickly. And hopefully a few hearts outside Germany too, because we want to convey our interests to the world in a pleasant manner. Mr. Wolf, thanks for speaking with us. Thank you.